Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdullah Tabi. Today, inshallah, I'm going to present uh, pulmonary embolism and pulmonary thromboendocardectomy. So, our outline today, I'm going to talk about deep vein thrombosis as a main source of uh, PE, acute PE, chronic PE, and pulmonary thromboendocardectomy. So, starting with Deep vein thrombosis uh, consider the uh, primary affected veins of the lower extremities or pelvis. It is the most common in hospitalized patient, but may occur in ambulatory patient outside the hospital. The process may involve superficial as well as deep uh, veins, but superficial veins usually superficial vein thrombosis does not generally propagate beyond this uh, sphenofemoral junction, and therefore very rarely it causes BE. Venous thrombosis uh, of the upper extremity is almost always associated with trauma, indwelling catheter, or other pathological states, and uh, is uncommon cause of PE. Now, for pathogenesis, uh, pathogenesis of uh, DVT is related to Virchow triad, which is composite of hypercoagulable state, circulatory stasis, and uh, endothelial vascular injury. Uh, Hypercoagulable state like malignancy, uh, uh, trauma or surgery, major surgery, stasis like immobilization or paralysis, uh, endothelial vascular injury like trauma or surgery. Immobilization by far the most important cause of venous stasis in hospitalized patients. And um, uh, in case of hypercoagulable state, three uncommon Three uncommon family deficiency associated with venous thrombosis are seen in antithrombin, protein C, and protein S. Now, for the risk factors for deep vein thrombosis, immobilization for more than one week, orthopedic surgery of hip or knee, recent surgery, multiple trauma, and cancer are strong risk factors. Uh, in patients with history of venous thromboembolism, the risk of developing new episode during hospitalization is nearly eight times that of someone without history. The incidence of venous uh, thromboembolism increased threefold in patients who have operation for cancer. Clinically silent DVT develops during hospitalization in nearly 50% of patients after myocardial revascularization. Diagnosis, approximately two-thirds of patients with DVT do not have clinical symptoms. Therefore, the diagnosis depends on the high degree of clinical suspicion and variety of objective, uh, objective diagnostic tests. Venography remains the most reliable test for detecting a thrombus in calf veins, but uh, it's invasive, not suitable for serial studies and the contrast material may be thrombogenic in nature if allowed to remain within the deep venous system. The most popular non-invasive test, which can be done at pit side, is combination of ultrasound and color flow, doubler mapping, widely referred as double scanning. Method does not uh, detect the fresh thrombus directly, but it interferes with the presence of a clot by flow patterns and inability to compress the uh, vessel in specific locations. It's operator dependence. Uh, in the hand skills of skills examiner, double scanning is uh, highly accurate for detection of thrombus in, in the popliteal deep femoral and superficial femoral veins and has sensitivity between 89 to 100% against uh, venography in symptomatic patients. MRI is a non-invasive method that can be used uh, to Im uh, image the entire venous system, including upper extremity veins and mediastina. For prophylaxis of DVT, uh, prevalence of DVT is its strong association and strong association with BE, and the identification of the risk factors in the pathogenesis of disease provided the basis and the rationale for prophylactic measures that are recommended in patients with two or more uh, major risk factors. Compression stocking should be prescribed uh, more often and be used in most non-ambulating patients in the hospital. Intermittent pneumatic compression is more expensive, but uh, it's effective. 
low dose subcutaneous heparin and low molecular weight heparin given once daily reduce the incidence of DVT approximately to 35 and 18%. Patients who have DVT diagnosed in hospital without PE, the probability of clinical diagnosed PE with the next 12 hours is 1.7. If PE occurs, the probability of recurrent PE uh, is uh, 8%. Six months of warfarin anticoagulation is recommended for patient to have DVT with or without PE as a prophylaxis against recurrent disease. Now coming for acute PE, um, the only firm attachment of the leg thrombus uh, is at the site of origin, usually venous saccular or venous valve pocket. Uh, the degree of organization within the thrombus varies, but recent clots are more likely to migrate than the older thrombi that are more firmly attached uh, firmly attached to the visual wall. Detached venous thrombus are carried uh, in the bloodstream throughout the right uh, heart into the pulmonary circulation. The majority of pulmonary emboli lodged in the lower loop are, uh, and are slightly more common in the right lung than the left. The probability of the, uh, the result of the relative flow to those area uh, of the lungs. After reaching the lungs, Impoli become coated with layer of platelet and fibrin. Simple mechanical obstruction of one or more pulmonary arteries does not in entirely explain the often of devastating hemodynamic consequences of major or massive impoli. Humoral factors, specifically serotonin, adenosine, diphosphate, platelet-derived de uh, uh, growth factor, thromboxin and platelet coating, uh, coating the thrombus, platelet activating factor and leukotrienes uh, from the neutrophils are also involved. Anoxia and tissue ischemia downstream uh, from the ampullae inhibit the endothelium derived uh, relaxing factor. Uh, production and enhance the release of superoxide anions by the activated neutrophils. The combination of these uh, effects contribute to increase pulmonary uh, vasoconstriction. Uh, the mortality of a large untreated PE is uh, 18 to 33 percent, but can be reduced to uh, about 8 percent if, uh, if diagnosed and treated. 75 to 90 percent of patients who die from uh, pulmonary embolism do so within the first few hours of the primary event. In patients who have sufficient cardiopulmonary reserve and right ventricular strength to survive the initial few hours, autolysis of emboli occur over the next few days and weeks. On average, approximately 20% of clots disappear by seven days and complete resolution may occur by seven, uh, 14 days. For many patients, up to 30 days are needed to dissolve a small emboli and up to 60 days for massive clot. As the natural uh, fibrinolytic system dissolves uh, the emboli mass, the embolic mass, the av uh, available cross-sectional area of pulmonary ar uh, arterial tree progressively increase, increases the pulmonary vascular resistance and right ventricular afterload decreases. In the vast majority of patients, pulmonary embolic continue to resolve and thus an immediate intervention therapy, particularly surgical embolectomy is not necessary for survival, except in minority of patients. And for clinical presentation, acute PE usually presents suddenly, symptoms and signs vary on the extent of blockage, the magnitude of humoral response and the pre embolus reserve of cardiac and the pulmonary system of the patient. The acute disease is conventionally stratified into minor, major, or massive embolism on the basis of hemodynamic stability and the arterial uh, hemodynamic stability, arterial blood gases, and lung scan or angiographic assessment of the blocked pulmonary arteries. Most pulmonary emboli are minor. Clinical feature of minor pulmonary embolism patient present with sudden unexplained anxiety, tachypnea. Dyspnea, pleuritic chest pain, cough, and occasionally strike hemoptysis. Examination may reveal tachycardia, rails, 
low grade fever sometime blue or rub heart sound and systolic blood pressure are often normal sometimes the pulmonary second heart sound is increased room air abg indicates partial oxygen pressure between 65 and 80 uh, and uh, a normal uh, partial co2 around uh, 35 millimeter mercury pulmonary angiogram shows uh, less than 30 percent occlusion of the pulmonary arterial vasculature Major BE associated with dyspnea, tachypnea, dull chest pain, and some degree of hemodynamic stability manifest, uh, manifested by tachycardia, mild to moderate hypotension, and elevated of the central venous pressure. Some patients may present with syncope rather than dyspnea or chest pain. From air, blood gases reveal moderate hypoxia, partial oxygen pressure between, uh, 65, below 65 and above 50, mild hypocarpia, uh, partial CO2 less than 30. Echo uh, may show a right ventricular dilatation. Pulmonary angiogram indicates that 30 to 50 of the pulmonary vasculature is blocked. Massive PE is truly life-threatening and causes hemodynamic instability. It's usually associated with occlusion more than 50% of pulmonary vasculature. Uh, patient developed acute dyspnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, and diaphoresis, and sometimes loss of consciousness. Both hypotension and low cardiac output are present. Cardiac arrest may occur. Uh, neck veins are distended. Central venous pressure is elevated, and right ventricular impulses uh, may be uh, present. Uh, air blood gases shows severe hypoxia. Partial uh, oxygen pressure less than 50, hypo, uh, hypocarpia, uh, partial CO2 less than 30, and sometimes acidosis. Oliguria, peripheral pulses are decreased, uh, and perfusion is poor. For diagnosis of PE, clinical diagnosis of acute, uh, major, or massive PE is wrong in 70 to 80% of patients who subsequently uh, have angiography. Differentiation of major uh, or massive BE from acute myocardial infarction, aortic dissection, septic shock, or other catastrophic states uh, is difficult and uncertain. The chest film may be normal, but usually shows uh, some combination of parenchymal infiltrate, atelectasis, uh, pleural effusion, uh, a zone of hypovascularity and which shape, pleural shape, uh, a plural based density raised and possibility of PE. ECG shows no specific T waves or ST segment changes, as mentioned uh, Q1, uh, uh, S1, Q3, T3. Minority of patients with massive embolism, 26%, may show evidence of corbal manel, right axis deviation, or right bundle branch block. Echocardiogram shows right heart dilation, raises the possibility of major or massive PE. A Schwangen catheter generally shows pulmonary arterial desaturation, uh, less than 25%, uh, but usually does not show pulmonary hypertension over 50 millimeter mercury because of low cardiac output and core pulmonary. A ventilation perfusion scan will provide a confirmatory evidence, but uh, this study may be unreliable because of pneumonia, atelectasis, previous pulmonary emboli, and other conditions may, which may cause mismatch in ventilation and perfusion and mimic a positive result. In general, negative VQ match uh, scan essentially excludes the diagnosis of clinically significant PE. VQ scan are interpreted as a high, intermediate, or low probability of, of PE to emphasize the lack of specificity but high sensitivity of the test. Uh, pulmonary angiograms provide the most definitive diagnosis, but collapse of the circulation may not allow the time for this procedure. And uh, pulmonary angiogram should not be performed in patient with, uh, if the patient's circulatory cannot be stabilized. MRI and CT angiography are better and invasive method for the diagnosis of pulmonary emboli uh, and to provide specific information regarding the flow within pulmonary vasculature. For the management of major BE, 
major B is defined as an acute uh, episode that causes hypoxia and mild hypotension, systolic arterial pressure uh, above 90, but does not cause cardiac arrest or sustained low cardiac output and cardiogenic shock. The first priority after sudden collapse of any patient to establish adequate ventilation and circulation may require intubation and mechanical ventilation. Pharmacological agent, including cardiovascular pressure and vasoactive agent, are uh, then used to uh, help stabilize the patient hemodynamics. Intravenous heparin is started with an initial bolus of 70 units per kg, followed by 18 to 20 units per kg per hour. Heparin will prevent propagation and uh, formation of new, th uh, new thromboemboli, but does not uh, dissolve the existing clot. In most, uh, most instances, the patient on fibrinolytic system lyses the fresh uh, thrombi over the period of days or weeks. In addition uh, of the lytic therapy, uh, that is tryptokinase, urokinase, or rec uh, recombinant tissue plasminogen activator, increases the, raises, uh, the rate of lysis of fresh uh, thrombi and uh, is recommended. In patient with stable circulation and no contraindications. This increased the rate of lysis of fresh pulmonary clots over uh, that of heparin alone during the treatment, but there is little difference in the amount of residual thrombus between the two treatments at five days or thereafter. There is also no statistical difference in mortality or in the incidence of recurrent PE, but more recent experience shows trend toward a better result with thrombolytic therapy because more rapid reduction in the right ventricular afterload and dysfunction. There are no data that indicate that thrombolysis reduces subsequent development of chronic, thrombo, uh, chronic pulmonary thromboembolism and pulmonary hypertension. Compared with heparin therapy alone, thrombolytic agents carry a higher list, uh, risk of bleeding complication and despite precautions, bleeding complication occur in approximately 20% of patients. Mechanical removal of pulmonary thrombi is possible by catheter device inserted into the femoral or jugular vein. Su successful extraction of clot within, uh, with a meaningful reduction of, uh, in the pulmonary arterial pressure varies between 60 to 84%. Management of acute massive PE, if circulation cannot be stabilized at survival level within several minutes or if cardiac arrest occur after massive PE, uh, time becomes paramount importance. 11% of patients with fatal PE die within the first hour, 43 to 80% within uh, two hours and 85% within six hours. The relative infrequency of treatment opportunity in massive PE mitigating the factor and lack of clear criteria for prescribing medical or surgical therapy leave the management of PE is unsettled. When surgery is not immediately available in patients who may not be, uh, may not be surgical candidate or in whom uh, uh, an alternative diagnosis seems more likely, Emergency extracorporeal life support using peripheral cannulation is an attractive uh, alternative. Role of emergency pulmonary thromboembolectomy. Emergency pulmonary thromb uh, thromboembolectomy is indicated for suitable patients with life-threatening circulatory insufficiency. TE and doubler mapping intraoperative can confirm the or uh, exclude the diagnosis of PE. TE will, indica uh, will indicate the uh, increased right ventricular volume, poor right ventricular contractility, and tricuspid regurg, which are strongly associated with massive PE uh, and acute core pulmonary. Echocardiographic detection of large clot trapped within the right atrium or ventricle in a hemodynamically compromised patient with a massive acute PE is another indication for emergency pulmonary thromboembolectomy. Also, anticoagulation for six months is recommended for most patients with PE, but an inferior vena cava filter is recommended uh, for patients with uh, contraindication. 
to anticoagulation or with recurrent PE, or those who will uh, require pulmonary uh, thrombin dart rectum. Now coming for the chronic thromboembolic uh, pulmonary hypertension. Pathophysiology, uh, most individuals with uh, chronic uh, pulmonary thromboembolic disease are unaware of uh, past thromboembolic event and give no history of DVT. The origin of most cases is, uh, of unresolved pulmonary emboli are from acute embolic episodes. The volume of acute embolic material may simply overwhelm the lytic mechanism. Total occlusion of a major arterial branch may prevent lytic material from reaching and therefore dissolving the uh, embolus completely. Repetitive emboli may not be uh, uh, may not be able to be resolved. The emboli may, may be made of substance that cannot be resolved by normal mechanism already will organize fibrous, thrombus, fat, or tumor. After the clot becomes wet, the pulmonary artery, one uh, in the pulmonary artery, one of the two process occurs. One uh, organization of the clot proceeds to canalization, producing multiple small endothelial uh, Endothelialized channels separated by a fibrous septa in bands and web. Uh, two complete fibrous organization of the fibrin clot without canalization may, may result, leading to solid mass of a dense fibrous connective tissue totally obstructing the arterial lumen. In patients with thromboembolic disease, however, we frequently detect pulmonary hypertension even when uh, less than 50% of vascular bed is occluded by thrombus. It does appear that uh, sympathetic neural connection, uh, hormonal changes, or both might initiate a pulmonary hypertension uh, in the initially affected pulmonary vascular bed. The process can occur with an initial occlusion either uh, being in the same or contralateral lung. Clinical presentation. There are no signs or symptoms specific for chronic thromboembolism. Most common uh, symptoms associated with thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, uh, as with all other causes of pulmonary hypertension, is exertional dyspnea. Non specific chest pain tightness occur in approximately 50% of patients with more severe pulmonary hypertension, hemoptysis, peripheral edema, epigastric or rare upper quadrant fullness or discomfort may develop uh, as a result of right heart fail or call pulmonary. Physical signs of pulmonary hypertension are the same uh, no matter what the underlying pathophysiology. Initially, uh, jugular venous pressure are characterized by large A wave, then, by, uh, then the V wave become predominant. Hypoxic and slightly cyanotic clopping is uncommon finding. Second heart sound is often narrow, split, and varies normally with respiration. Sharp systolic ejection click may be heard over the pulmonary artery. As the right side uh, fails, right uh, uh, atrial gallop usually is present. A tricuspid insufficiency develops because of the right, uh, large pressure gradients across the tricuspid valve and pulmonary hypertension. The murmur is, uh, is a high pitch, uh, high pitched, and may, may not exhibit respiratory variation. A murmur of uh, pulmonary uh, regurgitation may also be detected. Pulmonary function tests reveal minimal changes in the lung volume and ventilation. Patients generally have a normal or slight restricted pulmonary mechanics. Uh, most patients uh, are hypoxic, room air, uh, arterial oxygen tension ranges between 50 to 83 millimeter mercury. CO2 tension slightly reduced and compensated by reduced bicarbonate. This uh, space ventilation is increased. Ventilation perfusion study show moderate mismatch with some heterogeneity among uh, various uh, respiratory units within the lungs and correlate poorly with uh, the degree of pulmonary obstruction. For the diagnosis of chronic uh, PE, to ensure accurate diagnosis in patients with chronic pulmonary uh, thromboembolism, 
standardized evaluation is recommended for all patients with present, present, uh, who present with unexplained pulmonary hypertension. Test right graph it may show either uh, apparent fissile cutoffs of the low, uh, low or, seg or segmental pulmonary arteries or region or uh, leukemia suggesting vascular occlusion. The central pulmonary arteries are enlarged and the right ventricle may also be enlarged without an enlargement of the left atrium or ventricle. The ECG demonstrate finding of the right ventricle hypertrophy, right axis deviation, dominant R wave in V1. Pulmonary function tests are necessary to exclude obstructive or restrictive uh, intrinsic pulmonary parenchymal disease as the case as a cause of pulmonary hypertension. The ventilation perfusion lung scan is essential test to establish diagnosis of a result pulmonary thromboembolism and uh, still pulmonary angiography uh, the, uh, remains the gold standard for the diagnosis of chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. Medical treatment, chronic anticoagulation represents the mainstay of medical regimen. This is primarily used to prevent future embolic episodes. Inferior vena cava filters uh, are used routinely to prevent recurrent embolization. Right ventricular failure is treated with diuretics, uh, vasodilator, and although some proven result, the effect of general transient because the failures are owing to be mechanical obstruction and will not resolve until the obstruction is removed. Because of bronchial circulation, pulmonary embolization seldom result in tissue necrosis. Surgical endarterectomy, therefore, will allow distal pulmonary tissue to be used once more in gas exchange. Now coming for pulmonary thromboendarterectomy. Any questions so far? Pulmonary thromboendarterectomy. Uh, indication when the diagnosis of thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension has been firmly established, the decision for operation is based on the severity of symptoms and generally uh, general condition of the patient. Uh, three major reasons for considering thromboendarterectomy. One, hemodynamic at uh, alveolo respiratory and prophylactic. Hemodynamic goal is to prevent the right ventricle compromise caused by pulmonary hypertension. The respiratory objective is to improve respiratory function by the removal of large ventilated uh, but unperfused uh, physiological dead space, regardless of the severity of pulmonary hypertension. The prophylactic goal is to prevent progressive right ventricular dysfunction or retrograde extension of the obstruction. Principle for procedure, the endarterectomy must be bilateral because this is a bilateral disease in the vast majority of our patients. And uh, for pulmonary hypertension to be a major factor, both pulmonary vasculature uh, must be involved. Cardiopulmonary bypass is essential to ensure cardiovascular stability and circulatory arrest is required to ensure bloodless field. Uh, a variable amount of dissection is possible before the circulatory uh, arrest, but never complete dissection. Circulatory arrest periods are limited to 20% with restoration flow between each arrest. With experience in diatrectomy, usually can be performed in the single period of circulatory arrest on each side. I'm coming for the surgical technique. After median sternotomy incision, pericardium is incised longitudinally and attached to the wound edges. Typically, the right uh, heart is enlarged with a tense right atrium and variable degree of tricuspid regurgitation with severe right ventricular hypertrophy. Anticoagulation with heparin, 400 units per kg is administrated to prolong the activated uh, clotting time beyond 400 seconds. Full cardiopulmonary bypass uh, is uh, instituted with a high ascending aortic cannulation and two cable cannula. Temporary 
pulmonary artery vent is placed in the midline of the main pulmonary artery, just one centimeter distal to the pulmonary valve. Surface cooling with both uh, head jacket and cooling blanket is begun. The blood is cooled with a uh, pump oxygenator. When vent uh, ventricular fibrillation occurs, an additional vent is placed in the left atrium uh, through the right uh, superior pulmonary vein to, the pre to prevent the dis uh, distension from the uh, large amount of bronchial arterial blood flow that's common with these patients. During the cooling period, some preliminary dissection can be performed with full uh, mobilization of the right uh, pulmonary artery from the ascending aorta. The superior vena cava is also fully mobilized. Uh, the approach is, uh, to the right pulmonary artery is made medial, not lateral, to the superior vena cava. An incision is made in the right pulmonary artery from beneath the ascending aorta, outer under the superior vena cava, and entering the lower loop uh, branch of the pulmonary artery just after the, uh, the takeoff of the middle loop artery. The incision stays in the center of the vessel and continues into the lower uh, rather than the midline loop artery. Any loose thrombus, if possible, if present, is now removed uh, to obtain good visual, uh, visualization. There are four broad types of pulmonary occlusive disease related to thrombus that can be appreciated. Uh, type 1 disease, account 15% of cases, refer to the situation in which major vessel uh, clot is present and readily visible in the opening of pulmonary arteries. Type 2, 50% cases, no major vessel thrombus can be appreciated. In this case, only thickened intima can be seen uh, occasionally with webs, uh, and the endarterectomy plane is raised in the main uh, lobar or segmental vessel. Type 3, which is 30% uh, patient uh, present to the most challenging surgical situation. The disease is very distal and confined to segmental and subsegmental branches. No occlusion of vessel can be seen. The endarterectomy plane must be carefully raised in each segmental and subsegmental branches. Type 4 disease does not represent a primary thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and uh, is inoperable. Here are the picture. This is a picture of type A. It's usually in the major pulmonary vessel. Uh, type, uh, type 1, type 2, and type C, which usually present segmental and subsegmental vessel. After uh, dissection, micro, micro tome knife is used to develop the endarterectomy plane posteriorly because any in, in Darwin Aggress this uh, this site uh, could be required readily or simply left alone. When the patient temperature reaches 20 Celsius, the aorta is a cross clamp and single dose cold cardiologic solution is administrated. Additional myocardial protection is obtained by the use of cooling jacket. The entire procedure is now performed with a single aortic cross clamp period with no further administration of cardiologic solution. Dissection of the correct uh, plane is uh, critical because if the plane is too deep, the pulmonary artery may perforate with a fatal result. And if the dissection uh, plane is not deep enough, an adequate amount of coronary, uh, coronary thromboembolic material will be removed. The ideal layer is marked with a barely white plane with, uh, which strips easily. There should be no residual yellow plaque. If the dissection is too deep, reddish or pinkish color indicates that adventitia has been reached. More superficial planes should be sought immediately. Uh, once the plane is correctly developed, a full thickness layer is left uh, in the region of the incision to ease the, sub uh, to ease the uh, subsequent repair. The endarterectomy is then performed with a virgin technique using specially developed dissection instrument called Jameson aspirator filling probe. 
because the results is partially uh, partly inverted and subsegmental branches are being worked on a perforation here will become completely inaccessible and invisible later once the right sided endarterectomy is completed, circul uh, circulation is restarted and the arteriotomy is uh, repaired with, uh, with the continuous 6 O uh, polyproline suture. Now the surgeon moves to the patient's right side. Pulmonary vent cath is withdrawn and uh, an arteriotomy is made either from the side of pulmonary vent hole or uh, adjacent to it. Out laterally beneath the pericardial reflection and again into the lower loop, but avoiding entering into the left pleural space. Additional lateral dissection may be endanger the left phrenic nerve and makes subsequent repair of left pulmonary artery more difficult. There is often lymphatic vessel encounter the left pulmonary artery at the level of pericardial reflection called Jameson, uh, Jameson's lymphatics and it's wise to clip the, uh, this before being divided with the pulmonary artery incision. The left-sided dissection is virtually analogous in all respect to that, uh, to that accomplished into the, in the right side. By the time the circulation is arrested once more, uh, it will have been uh, hemodynamics, a cardiac output generally high with low systematic vascular resistance. Temporary pacing wire are placed, wound closure uh, is routine. For post-operative care, all patients are mechanically ventilated overnight. Higher minute uh, ventilation is often required early after uh, the operation to compensate uh, for the temporary metabolic acidosis that develops after a long period of circulatory arrest, hypothermia, and cardiopulmonary bypass. Tidal volume higher than those uh, normally recommended after cardiac surgery. Maximum inspiratory pressure is maintained below 30 centimeter of water if possible. Excavation should be performed on the first post-operative day whenever is possible. Diuresis, uh, after hypothermic circulatory arrest, patient initiate an early spontaneous aggressive diuresis for unknown reason. Uh, this may in part uh, be related to increased cardiac output related to now lower uh, pulmonary vascular resistance level and improve RV function. This diuresis should be augmented with diuretics, however, with the aim of returning the patient preoperative fluid balance within 24 hours of operation. Fluid administration is minimized and the patient hematocrit level should be maintained above 30% to increase oxygen carrying capacity and to reduce the likelihood of pulmonary reperfusion phenomena. Arrhythmias, the development of uh, atrial arrhythmia approximately 10%, but nowadays the sitting and the size of this incision may be helpful in the reduction uh, of the incidence of these arrhythmias. Coming for the complication, aside from complications, that are associated with open heart uh, surgery or major lung surgery, arrhythmias, uh, atelectasis, wound infection, pneumonia, mediastinal bleeding. There are uh, complications specific to this operation. Includes persistence, pulmonary hypertension, reperfusion, pulmonary response, neurological disorder related to deep hypothermia. I will talk in detail about reperfusion response. Uh, specific complication that occurs in many patients to some degree is localized uh, pulmonary edema is defined as a radiological opacity seen in the lungs within 72 hours of pulmonary endarterectomy through reperfusion injury that directly adversely impacts the clinical course of the patient now occur approximately 10% of patient associated profound desaturation edema like fluid sometimes with a bloody tinge uh, is suctioned from endotracheal tube one common cause of reperfusion pulmonary edema is persistence high pulmonary arterial pressure after operation uh, when uh, through endarterectomy uh, has been performed in certain area. But uh, there remain a large part of pulmonary vascular bed affected by a type 4 uh, change.
This complication should be managed, if possible, by identification of the affected area by bronchoscopy and balloon occlusion of the affected loop anticoagulation can be normalized. Last slide for the management of reperfusion uh, response. Early measure should be uh, or early measure should be taken to minimize development of pulmonary edema by diuresis, mean, uh, maintenance of hematocrit level, and the early use of peak in the expiratory pressure. Once the capillary leak has been established, however, treatment is supportive because of reperfusion pulmonary edema will eventually resolve if uh, satisfactory hemodynamics if satisfactory hemodynamics and oxygenation can be maintained. Hematocrit is kept high uh, from 32 to 36, and patient undergoes aggressive diuresis, even if this required ultrafiltration. The fraction of uh, FI2 uh, level is kept as low as uh, compatible with uh, oxygen saturation of 90%. A careful titration of positive end expiratory pressure is carried out with the progressive transition from volume to pressure limited uh, inverse ratio ventilation and the acceptance moderate, uh, of moderate hypercapnia. Uh, the use of steroid is uh, disencouraged because they are generally ineffective and may lead to infection. Inhaled nitri nitric oxide at 20 to 40 uh, parts per million can improve the gas exchange. Extracorporeal perfusion support like extracorporeal membrane oxygen, uh, oxygenator or extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal can be used until ventilation resumed, usually after 7 to 10 days. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Well, I have a